right, cool. Uh, well, those of you that are still hopping on, uh, obviously we always like to ask everybody where you're watching from today. So if you want to let us know in the chat, uh, it's always uh, interesting to see where everybody's coming from. Uh, but we're going to dive straight in today. We got, uh, I think, a pretty interesting topic to sort of discuss. And this is one where I'd love to hear what you have to think as well, because I don't know that we have, uh, you know, we don't quite have a crystal ball or anything like that. Um, we've got our theories and whatnot, but we're always interested to hear what all of you think as well. So I'm going to get some slides going and then we'll start uh, running here. So we are talking today about, you know, sort of, you know, what what is going to happen over the next six months, right? And you, you see these things all the time this time of year, you know, what's going to happen to 2020. We wanted to be a little bit more narrow, sort of intentionally, we want to talk specifically about the next six months. Um, and the truth is, there are always things changing when it comes to social media, when it comes to video, the tools that are available, the formats, the strategy. Um, I think we're, you know, as we sort of come out of the, the lockdown and pandemic period, which I know is not over, you know, so that's, that's certainly still rolling, but we're seeing an acceleration. We're seeing an acceleration of um, the kinds of videos being created, the amount of people that are using video, the expectation of our customers to communicate with us through video. Um, it's, it's, you know, should be surprising how often people are ready and willing and want to jump on Zoom meetings instead of meeting in person. I mean, obviously there's still uh, health considerations there, but that's going to stick around. People are going to want to keep doing this stuff because it's super efficient. So what we want to talk about today is just what should you be expecting, right? So what are some of the trends that uh, maybe have already emerged, are continuing to emerge? How can you stay on top of those trends? And what this boils down to is we assume if you're here on these webinars, you get it, right? You understand video is important. You're starting to use it in your business. Um, and so we're trying to keep you ahead of the curve, right? Because there are things that are always going to be changing, new opportunities around the corner at any time. And so we're trying to give you a little bit of insight into that, all right? So Jeff and I are just kind of go back and forth a little bit today and uh, give you a bunch of ideas. And like I said, let us know what you think, right? So if you've got some trends or if there's a new tool that has emerged that you think is going to blow up in the next six months, throw it in the chat, let us know, and we'd be happy to discuss it, all right? So let's kick things off hey, here. Hey, Nick, before we start real quick, I just wanted to acknowledge the, we've got, we've got people from all over the country, like from all four corners. We go from, from Northeast to Southeast to Southwest to Northwest. That's pretty awesome. Welcome everyone, including you, Charles, from the home of the best college basketball. I just wish we could get college basketball back, my friend. Uh, I just wanted to acknowledge, oh, we got a Maui, even better. Jeez. Let's just Maui all uh, over the place. Let's just all, right. all go visit Don and Maui. Cool. All right. Sorry. Carry on. Oh, no, no. Yeah. Definitely want to acknowledge that. We appreciate everybody being here today. Um, so here's the first trend, right? So the first trend, and this is one um, I think Jeff would definitely sort of confirm for you here is micro content, right? Now, this is one that's sort of come and gone over the years. Uh, in a lot of ways, Vine, um, I would argue Vine kind of started the micro content trend or was certainly the, the sort of biggest promoter of it. Um, and then Vine eventually died out, right? And I, and I kind of thought that was maybe the end of the micro content movement. And we weren't going to see as many of these sort of super short videos. Um, and then just a couple of years later, after Twitter had gotten rid of and closed down Vine, um, it sort of exploded again, right? And I'm not sure, you know, one of the things that we saw in that period was was the emergence of live video. That, that's been a real big trend over the past couple of years. And so I wonder if that sort of took the attention of the platforms. And then now we're seeing this sort of um, full circle coming back to the micro content. Uh, but let's talk about this for a second. So what do we mean by micro content, right? So these are super short videos, right? <clears throat> and we say 15 to 60 seconds. I, I would honestly say it's even under 15 seconds. I mean, if you remember Vine was six second limits. <laughs> so your videos had to be under, I think that was too short. I think it's part of why Vine didn't make it. Um, but TikTok seems to have really found the sweet spot here, right? So in TikTok, you're starting with either a 15 second um, sort of time limit or a 60 second time limit. Uh, that's kind of where we came up with these two numbers because I do think TikTok is really starting to dominate here. Um, and then we're seeing an explosion of this kind of content. So, you know, reels, shorts, uh, you're seeing short content in stories. Obviously, stories can be both pictures and video, but if you record most of the stories formats are sort of set up for 15 second uh, clips or shorter, and then it'll, it'll cut off or it'll create a second clip at that point. Um, so this is one, and Jeff, I wanted to get your opinion on. I mean, why do you think we've seen this sort of resurgent of, of micro sort of super short content over the past year or so? So my, first of all, I think Vine was just ahead of its time. I think they were yeah. brilliant, but the world wasn't ready for 
for it. And now we've gotten into a place where social media has become so inundated and diluted with video, which, which is funny because there's still, it's only a fraction of the world that's actually doing it, right? Uh, so it's only going to continue to evolve and get more diluted. But uh, I think that uh, it's it's just the emergence of of all of the it's just where everyone's on content overload, and so now uh, it the the our attention spans are so short that TikTok has just figured it out, you know. And and we're going to talk deeper about this. I'm going to talk more about uh, how I use it because I've fallen in love with it, and not because of necessarily the app itself or the platform itself. It's because of uh, the creation piece of it and how I use it and how it's helped me become better at, at, at putting uh, my messages uh, and, and shortening them. So uh, I just think it's the, it's the future of the world. It's not going to get shorter than that. I think 15 seconds is here to stay for a long time. Uh, and I think, I think TikTok is basically also ahead of the game by saying up to 60 seconds. They're basically saying, start prepping for that. Like start creating content that is going to be at 60 or less and ideally try to keep it closer to 15. Cool. And we'll come back to that. We're going to talk more about TikTok here in just a few minutes, because I do think TikTok is, is obviously is, it's a trend we've talked about a lot. We're going to continue talking about, but it is a huge opportunity for you. Um, now, here's another sort of overall trend. And I wanted to start with just sort of giving you some some sort of generalized trends, and then we'll get a little bit more into the dirt as we go here. Um, the other sort of aspect of all of this is that content is is really has and was con is continuing to shift to this device, right? So we all have a phone in our pocket. You know, all of these screens are, are full HD, if not 4K. Um, the only downside is that they're small, but you hold them close enough and it doesn't really look all that small, right? So we're seeing that that human behavior, that user behavior shift. And so uh, what that means is that it used to be, I mean, I would say even six months to a year ago, when someone would ask me sort of like, what is my default format? What, what video format should I be using? A lot of times it was landscape, right? It was, hey, landscape is, it, all of YouTube is landscape. Facebook likes landscape. You know, there's a lot of these platforms that use landscape that you might really want to go with. And so that would be horizontal, right? It's just, just like the video you're watching right now. And so that's not going anywhere, but people are more so and more so every single week and month switching to consuming content on their phone, right? And if you look at, you know, sort of the biggest announcements when it comes to technology, usually the most exciting ones are, are new improvements in phone technology, right? That's, that's the stuff that gets the most coverage because it's where people are, are kind of focusing and spending the most time. So, you know, I would say about, a, about you know, over the past two years, one thing I really started recommending was Square format because Square is sort of a good hybrid of the two. Um, you can see, and we, we actually put diagrams of each of these formats on the screen here so you can kind of understand what we're talking about. As you can see on the right-hand side with, with the Square format, um, you get a decent amount of real estate on the screen, right? Because I think that's what you have to ultimately think about is you're scrolling on your phone, right? So somebody's scrolling, every single platform works the same way. You do the whole scroll sort of thing. And on a lot of those platforms, if you have a landscape video, it doesn't take up much space. If you have a vertical video, it takes up almost the whole screen, which is good. But what if you want to have a video that works both well on desktop and phone? That's where Square has really emerged, right? So Instagram has always been a Square format that's sort of changing now that they have IGTV and Reels. Um, but traditionally, they were Square. And so a Square video looks pretty good on a phone and on a desktop, right? So if you're trying to make something that's going to work well on both Facebook, Instagram, and then also something you can maybe uh, tweak to make work on YouTube or TikTok, I think Square might be something to consider. But I think ultimately where this is all heading is it's going to be vertical, right? Um, and Jeff, I don't know, do, do you know much about the research? I think maybe Tristan was talking about this last time that Snapchat did about vertical video and, and, and sort of hyper, uh, you know, quality, uh, small content. In terms of what? Say that again. So Snapchat did some research. I'll just recap what I remember yes, from Tristan yes. saying about, you know, basically vertical format video on the phone. Did, did you have any other insight into that in terms no. of what they found there? No, other than that, honestly, and we talked about this, I think the last time we talked, we discussed this topic is that 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 everything is starting to, to trend that way. Uh, which is vertical, other than long form. So I think short form is all going to be going vertical. Um, I don't remember what the psychology was behind it, but I think it talked about it in that, in that article. Well, so one thing I'll, I'll mention, and this is uh, something we talked about with uh, Grant Wise when we did a conversation with him last week, was 
um, vertical format. So if, if you think about the, the screen of the phone, right, and you think about holding it a certain distance from yourself, and you think about someone's face being on that screen, when you see that, when you see that person on the screen, your brain doesn't actually know the difference between that being a video and an in-person interaction, right? So I think this is where, and I don't know that the Snapchat re research was all about just this part of it, um, but you can see like, we actually have a picture here on the screen that, that represents this, right? When you see that person's face and it sort of fills up the screen like that, it feels like you're having an actual conversation with them, right? Your, your brain sort of feels like you're in person and that's a very powerful impact, right? Um, so when we talked to Grant, we were actually talking about how when you're doing um, a lead gen funnel, right? So you're putting information in front of people um, and there's kind of multiple ways to think about it. But when you get to the point where you want them to take action, right? So if we think about a, a uh, you know, a, a marketing funnel, you have awareness, then you have in the middle consideration, and at the bottom you have conversion, right? So in the awareness stage, you just want people to sort of discover you, consideration, you start to teach them a little bit more about yourself, maybe you start to show client testimonials, but when you get to conversion, that's when you want them to take action, right? You want them to click on a link, you want them to register for a webinar, or you, know, you want them to schedule a time to talk to you about their housing needs, whatever it is, what Grant has found is that when you use a vertical format, um, sort of selfie style video, not a lot of polish, but where your face is sort of basically filling up the screen. So you kind of film it like this, those videos actually convert higher than anything else they've tested, right? And they, they run thousands of Facebook ads for real estate agents all over the country. So it's pretty thoroughly tested. So I thought that was really an interesting aspect of this because that wasn't necessarily on TikTok specifically or, or any of these phone-based apps. That was across all platforms. And I think that's something that you're gonna to start to see, right? That obviously Snapchat makes sense that they're researching this because Snapchat is also a very much vertically formatted um, type of content. And so what I think is most interesting about that is it's not surprising that we're ending up there because we've had these devices for a long time. It's been over 10 years, 11 years, something like that, right? And there's a certain form factor and you hold the phone vertically like this. So it was only a matter of time that we started to see vertical format become dominant, right? Because of the devices we're using. But it's interesting that it even seems to be going a step beyond that where for whatever reason, this format of content, this sort of intimacy you have with the screen and with the person on the screen um, is actually creating a better engagement with the user, with the person watching your content, right? So I would really encourage you to start thinking about that when, when you know, we've, we've kind of you know, evangelized video for years. I mean, you've, you've been hearing all of us talk about, you need to make videos, you gotta make this part of your business for a long time. We're starting to move past that, right? Because at this point, you either get it or you don't. And if you don't, you're going to start to pay the price here in the next you know, couple of years. If you do get it, then it's we're moving to this next phase, which is there's a whole bunch of nuance. There's different kinds of videos. There's different formats of videos. There's different you know, approaches, different person, personas you can represent, um, which is where I get excited because I think that's a lot more interesting, right? Just simply saying make videos is sort of boring saying, hey, here's the kind of video you can make in vertical format works a little different. And there's some psychology to this. Um, that is, I think, really interesting. So main takeaway, we, we talked a little more on this than I, I anticipated, but the main takeaway here is you want to start thinking vertically, all right? You want to start thinking people consuming content on their phones, and you want to consider the, the benefits of doing things this way, right? Now, one thing I will say about vertical video is please make sure you frame yourself correctly when you make vertical videos, all right? This is definitely a pet peeve of mine, um, but you will see people all the time for some reason who show up in the bottom half of their vertical videos. And you see like the entire ceiling and you see the, the ceiling fan and all kinds of stuff above them. Um, and I don't necessarily understand other than I get, you know, maybe you're trying not to, you know, you feel a little fat that day or something and try not to show the rest of your body, but it's a weird experience. So if you see the image here of the woman on the left-hand side of the screen, um, either there or she could even be probably another 10% higher in the frame than she is in that picture. But you want to make sure that your face and your eyes, right? Remember the rule of thirds. If there, if there was two lines across the screen that split the screen up into one third sections, you would want your eyes or your nose to sort of line up on the, on the top of those two lines, all right? So keep that in mind when you're shooting vertical video of yourself is that you don't want to keep yourself too low in the frame because it just comes across as a little bit awkward, right? And I know that's a little bit of getting used to, um, but it is something to definitely keep in mind, right? 
So now let's get into the kind of more specifics here. So where do we see these trends emerging? How can you use this to your advantage? Um, what are some of the things that you should maybe put extra effort and time into? And so, of course, we're going to talk about TikTok. I mean, this is one that Jeff, I think, has been a huge proponent of for, what, at least a year now, Jeff? How long has oh, it been since you got on yeah. that? It was uh, actually, it was a year ago this month that I first spoke on a stage in, in a real, at a real estate conference saying, start paying attention to TikTok. Nice. And had you made a TikTok video at that point? Or oh, yeah. I, I shared yeah. examples. Yep, absolutely. Well, I'll let you take this because I mean, I've only made like five or six TikTok videos. <laughs> My last one totally bombed after I put a bunch of work into it. So that's, I don't feel very confident funny. at the moment. <laughs> that, that's fine. Well, there's no such thing as bombing, to be honest with you. That's all vanity, to be honest. But yeah, I mean, TikTok is, is uh, it's the future of social media. The technology that, 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 uh, is, that TikTok is made up of is what is so appealing. Uh, it's also insanely entertaining. I, I can't remember the last time my wife and I have laughed so much together, just sitting and enjoying honestly the platform it's really really entertaining which also can be a rabbit hole but uh, for the sake of business uh, let's first share these statistics which 800 million monthly users worldwide that doesn't matter as much to me what matters to me is how many users there are in the u.s which is now up to over 100 million and if any of you have been paying attention or listening to us at all uh, when we were doing these uh, presentations about six months ago, less than that, four or five months ago, that number was at about 30 million. So it has skyrocketed basically since COVID. Uh, and that is not just COVID related, it's because it's starting to catch fire. And it is now the fifth largest social network that's also moved up and it's continuing to climb. Uh, uh, there's still the biggest age group is still a younger audience, 16 to 24. Uh, however, that is trending up. And if you're on TikTok, you've started to notice that it, the algorithm works just the same as all of the other platforms. You will get what you consume. So if you want to look at 15 year old girls dancing around, uh, if you stop there and you're engaging that, that's what the platform is going to show you. Now, if you are engaging with real estate content or adult content, well, then that's what the algorithm is going to give you. So, uh, you know, you can you can control the narrative there. Uh, and then obviously, let's see that 50 million, that's old. Uh, users spend on average 45 minutes per day. That's just now. Um, and so in other words, people are spending a lot of time on TikTok. Uh, so it's just like any other platform. If you want to be seen, be there. And uh, got a, Yeah, I was going to add, Jeff, we got a, in the chat, uh, Sarah was saying that they have an agent who gets almost all of her buyer leads off of TikTok. Crazy. <laughs> Um, which is, yeah, I mean, it's really kind of crazy. Lots of elder millennials on TikTok, tons of amazing content creators who are adults and professionals. So yeah, I mean, this is, and I think this is, there's, there's sort of a, a trend within a trend here that I want to mention. And that is that you don't get nearly as much time to adapt to new platforms as we used to, all right? Um, TikTok went from like nobody having any idea what it was maybe 12 to 16 months ago to being like maybe, I mean, it's the dominant short form content platform in the world already, right? Um, and so, you know, so you got to remember that too. It's like, you know, when Facebook first started to take off, you had a lot more time, right? I mean, there was a, there was multiple years of time there where they kind of rolled out something new and no business pages and, you know, you kind of had time to get used to it. And this is true of all technology. I mean, there's, there's an acceleration happening, you know, in all tech, um, but it's certainly true in social media where like this opportunity is passing you by right now, right? I mean, if you're not getting on TikTok, you know, can you still get on there and use it? Yes. But is the days, I mean, Jeff, why don't you talk about like in the earlier days, you know, just what, nine months ago or something, how easy it was to just sort of grab followers versus now. I mean, wh how, what kind of changes have you seen there, even in just that span of time? Actually, I don't know that it's, it, you know, it's probably changed a little bit, but I actually just saw a, a, a realtor. Uh, from the Facebook group RETV, one of the OG guys, one of the guys who, who runs it, uh, who's a big right. video proponent, obviously, uh, never grabbed onto TikTok, actually was kind of a, uh, a naysayer about it. He just posted, uh, I think it was Monday, about his first TikTok and how it's got a million views. And it wasn't even that good of a, of, of a video. It I was just, it. Yeah, it, was it like, just it, caught, you saw that. Yeah, so it, yeah. it grabbed attention. <laughs> and so the point is, that there's really no truly 
knowing exactly how the algorithm is going to take. The word in the beginning was that if you were newer to the platform, it was going to favor you and quote unquote suck you in by having one of your videos go viral. I actually don't think these platforms work that way. I don't think they have the time to sit there and and uh, and and kind of review and 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 adjust accordingly. I think it's simply the way the algorithm works. What they which they say is your video goes into a bucket of, a, of roughly 500 people. If that if it's received well, it then moves on to a second bucket of a thousand people. If it continues to go, it just, that continues to tear up. And that is what they tell us how the algorithm works. I don't have any confirmation of that. I've just heard that explained multiple times. So I assume it's coming from somewhere. Yeah. And the one thing I will say is you got a million views um, and they had, I think a thousand followers, which is a lot, right? If you were on Facebook or Instagram, that would seem like a lot. If he had done that about nine or 10 months ago, he'd probably have 50,000 followers. I mean, that's right. just, again, it's that's the difference in how these platforms emerge and explode so fast is that when you're super early, you're going to give followers almost no matter what you do, right? Versus now you're going to have to do something a little bit more creative, a little bit more exciting because a lot of the users have already started following people. They're starting to identify what they like, right? And so every day you wait to start taking advantage of some of the trends we're talking about now you're missing out on the larger part of the ROI, right? It doesn't mean the ROI goes away. It doesn't mean it's not worth doing. Um, however, I will say there will come a point where just like I, I was using this example in a webinar earlier today, you know, imagine when email first emerged and like hardly anybody had email addresses and then we all had to start getting them, right? The first few people that got them, they got a massive benefit and a massive advantage for a couple of years because they were that much easier to communicate with, right? And then can you imagine today being somebody that's like still requesting faxes instead of emails or like, oh, can you mail that to me? Like, can you print it and mail? Like, no one would do that, right? It's insane. So you have to you have to think of all of these transitions the same way, which is when you're in the early adopter phase, when there's not that many people doing them yet, you can get super easy, very quick results like Jeff did when he first got on TikTok, right? And then as you let these things mature without taking advantage of them, they become expectations, right? There's a certain point, and I don't know that TikTok is ever going to be a requirement to be a real estate agent, um, but video will be a requirement. Some kind of video communication will be expected from customers. And so you have to decide, you know, where are you going to apply that, right? What parts of, of that new form of communication are you really going to kind of, you know, own and, and go all in on, right? And I think TikTok, you know, as we're seeing, I mean, and it was, I don't know, it was just two months ago that people were sort of asking, ah, is anybody getting results from TikTok? I don't really see. And all of a sudden now in the past like two weeks, I've heard of a bunch of different cases where people are pulling real business directly from TikTok, but they probably started six or eight or 12 months ago, right? These are not necessarily people just getting on right now. Um, unless you're, you know, what's his face? He got a million views on his first video. Yeah, this happens, I, don't, right? I, I don't think there's a template for that though, either. I mean, and, and so, and when, when Nick says that you're, you're not, it's not a requirement, no social media is a requirement. The reason why you're on this webinar today is because you're interested in, in learning more about it, or you want to, uh, you know, up your game. The reality is, is being visible on social and branding yourself on social attracts business. So if you enjoy chasing it, then you don't need to be here. Like you, you don't need to be on social. Uh, but if you, if you want to get more into the attraction game, that's what social media can do for you. And, and I want to quickly, Nick, uh, touch on one question from Randy uh, yeah. about uh, the, the data, you know, being secure on TikTok. That has since been completely uh, squashed, uh, Randy. Uh, so what ended up happening was TikTok ended up selling, it basically split into two companies. So now there's two companies, there's two TikToks, it's called TikTok Global. It's uh, owned partially by Oracle, an American-based company who's now running the security. This was what Trump approved. And then 7.5% is owned by Walmart, which is uh, uh, running their marketing. So there's two different TikToks. They basically split into two. And the American version, uh, the security of the app now is controlled by Oracle, which is an American company, which Trump approved. It's good to go. The future is bright for TikTok. Uh, and that happened about two months ago. Very cool. All right. I don't want this whole presentation to be about TikTok. Yeah, you're right. Let's, let's, let's <laughs> We're going to move on to other things. Um, and so uh, let's talk. Oh, well, like, I do have another slide on it, but I think I, I think we've talked about most of this already. I mean, Jeff, why don't you just the last thing I want you to mention is just the editing on TikTok. Yeah, yeah. How easy it is to edit because I think that's where, you know, when it comes to getting into short form content, 
Um, let me just ask this question, Jeff. Like if you were saying, all right, I buy into the short form content. I want to start doing stuff that's 20 seconds or less, that kind of thing. Would TikTok be the place to get started or are there any other places or the other tools you would start with first? What do you think? Well, so we've mentioned, you know, all of these different platforms like Reels and obviously the shorts and what's coming. TikTok's just way more advanced than all of them and we'll probably touch on that. But I, here's what I'm going to explain to you. Uh, if, if TikTok in and of itself as a social media platform isn't interesting to you because you feel like the audience is too young, that's fine. But here's what I can tell you because I personally don't really care about the audience either. It's purely for vanity. I just have fun with that. What I love about it is, is because I know the future of video, the future of, of messaging, the future of marketing is short, short, short form. So those of us who can master the art of short form marketing are going to get seen more often because people do not have the tolerance or the attention span for two, three minute videos where you are vomiting and just rambling on. And so what the way I look at it, and you can go go follow me on TikTok or go look at some of my videos, whatever you want to do. And I've got some great examples. I use TikTok as a platform to create content. It's my camera. That's what it is. It's my camera. It's my editing uh, platform. It's my music platform. It's, it's all of that all built into one. So what what normally would have taken me 30 to, to 60 minutes to create now is taking me 10 minutes because it's all built into the platform. Plus I can use uh, editing features like jump cuts, which is a very popular way to shoot videos now, even in YouTube videos, 10 minute YouTube videos, it's the popular YouTubers jump cut, jump cut, jump cut, jump cut. That's how, that's what's popular right now. And I think we'll talk a little bit more about that, Nick, but yeah, I, I will end by saying this. Let's just say, I just did a, a couple of videos recently about like what, it, what can you expect interest rates to do after the election? It was a business related content. It was actually good. It was received really well. If I had done it traditionally prior to TikTok, I would have gone live or I would have done a video. I probably would have spoke for two or three minutes. But because TikTok only gives me 60 seconds, it forced me to basically script my message, condense it down to be very concise and get it done in less than 60 seconds. I then jump cut it. Cut it. And the reason why I love doing this is that it allows me to shoot the video in segments. So all I have to do is a line at a time, which makes it very easy to not ramble. There's no ums, there's no ahs, there's no, there's no rambling because I have to be very concise. And I love this about short form, not even just TikTok. I just love it about short form content. So if you want an example, go check my, my page out and you'll see a couple of recent videos where I did this and you'll see what I mean by jump cutting. And uh, we might talk more about that, Nick. So I think, I hope that helps answer yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and I want to let me ask this because I'd love to get some feedback here. You know, TikTok has kind of swung back and forth. Ah, I was going to be, you know, kicked out for a while and obviously it didn't get there. And, you know, at this point it has a hundred million, you know, active users in the U.S. Um, if you would like to see us do more webinars specifically on TikTok, you know, how to use TikTok, what kind of videos to make for it, how to pull leads from TikTok, let us know in the chat right now. If we get enough interest in that, we could definitely come back to this. I don't want to make today's presentation all about it. Um, but let me know in the chat if you want us to talk more about TikTok and we can definitely consider doing that because um, we're always looking for ideas for these. So TikTok is one of the platforms, right? We've got a few others though. So let's talk about the other options out there. Um, and what happened, you know, just, just to be transparent, obviously, is that TikTok emerges. Um, they acquired music.ly or musically in the US. Um, that's kind of how they, they got themselves into the United States in the first place. And, you know, Musical.ly was doing decently. It seemed to, to have some traction, but once it became TikTok, I, I think they had something sort of, you know, some, some magic sauce beyond that. And it sort of continued, it just blew up from there, right? So then everybody else took notice, right? So you saw Instagram, Facebook wake up, YouTube wakes up, you know, everybody else realizes, wow, this is not just, you know, the, the, yeah, it's a great editing tool for making short form videos, but it's also a really successful social platform in and of itself, what can we do to keep up with that, right? So Instagram was one of the first to come out with their solution. And it was released in August of 2020. So it's been out for just a few months at this point. It's called Instagram Reels. Um, and again, Jeff, I know, I know you've kind of experimented a little mm -hmm. bit with this. Why don't you tell us, you know, how do you compare um, Instagram Reels to TikTok? Uh, it's a child's play version of TikTok. In other words, <laughs> uh, I think Reels rushed it. I think they rushed it uh, to Randy's point uh, back in the summer because they thought TikTok was going to get shut down and they start they they released it too soon uh, because the initial word was that it wasn't going to get released until January of 2021. And so it's a similar concept. I think you're going to we're going to show some slides that show the similarities, but it does not have a fraction of the editing features that TikTok has. 
However, if you're big into Instagram, which I am, uh, as you would know on any of the social platforms, you need to be using the tools that the platform wants you to use. They're new features, right? That's how you're going to usually be opened up and be seen to more uh, to more of your audience. And so, using Reels is important. So it's a very similar concept. Uh, it's just short. It's just creating short content, typically on your stories for this, uh, but very very similar, very similar to TikTok, just not nearly as robust. So I would say this to, to all those folks out there that want to get into the TikTok but feel like it's a little over overwhelming, uh, dominate reels first, go into reels. If you're already on Instagram, go, go get very comfortable with reels because that will make it an easy segue or easy evolution to then take on TikTok. Yeah, that's a great point. And we did have a, so there was some interest in the chat about talking more on TikTok, but a few people did ask about YouTube. I'm glad you did that because YouTube also recognizes, I'll actually come back to that in a second. If we have time, Oh, where am I? There it is, YouTube. Um, so YouTube, I'm sorry, I got order, out of order on my slides, but YouTube realizes the threat here, right? And so YouTube in a lot of ways, I would say has dominated the other form of content. And we're going to be talking about that in a minute here, um, which is long form content, right? Content that you sort of commit to, you intend to spend some time with, you know, feels a lot more like a television show or even a movie, at least in the way that we sort of experience it. Um, and so, but that being said, even though YouTube's kind of dominated that side of it, they see TikTok as such a significant um threat is such a significant opportunity maybe for them as well that they are coming out with their own version called YouTube Shorts, right? Um, so Jeff, is this something that you that you know much about or you want to talk on it or I, I can chime in obviously? Uh, yeah, other than the fact that I think it's fascinating that if YouTube, and so to answer, there's a couple of people that have commented like, are you vacating YouTube? Absolutely not. Like YouTube is the future of television. YouTube is an absolute place to be, but it is, it is 180 degrees different than TikTok or Reels. Now, I think it's fascinating that YouTube is building this in, which tells me, which is like a, you know, flashing red light that says TikTok is is onto something, right? They're, they're basically copying it. But no, YouTube is a business strategy in and of itself that I know. So I have several realtor friends, Nick and I, you, we both know them, that mm -hmm. their entire business strategy is built on YouTube. So uh, you, I'll let you talk a little bit more about shorts specifically. Yeah. And so we had some questions already about it. You know, does it have the same uh, Google juice, you know, as, as YouTube does? So yeah, this is, this is very much going to be, um, it's not out in the U S yet. There's still, there's still beta testing in India, which is why we don't honestly know that much about it. We just know it's coming. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's going to be a part of YouTube, right? So this is going to have the same advantages. Um, I would assume these will be likely to show up in Google search results, just like a traditional YouTube video would. Um, so this, you know, so again, we don't know a lot about this one. We, we didn't have a ton of detail, obviously, coming in, but keep an eye on it because here's the big thing, right? TikTok, still a huge opportunity, obviously get on there, right? But it, but it's maturing a little bit, right? Um, YouTube, you will know of ahead of its launch, right? So you're going to be, you're going to have an opportunity to be one of the very first people to get on it and use it. And there is so much opportunity in that really short period of time, right? So if you can get out there, you can start creating content. You can put some videos out there um, as in the first few weeks or first few months of shorts coming out, that should be a huge opportunity for you. And so we're not going to talk too much about that. What I will also ask is, since we asked about TikTok, let me know in the chat if you'd like us to do um, a webinar more specifically on YouTube and YouTube strategy. Um, we'd be happy to do that as well. We did do one a few weeks ago, or maybe spent almost a couple months at this point about YouTube ads. It seemed like that one was pretty popular. We'd be happy to do that again if we if we get enough requests for it. So again, if you want more YouTube, let me know in the chat. Obviously, we'll, we'll probably come back on, on TikTok. So uh, before we move on, we got some more good stuff for you today. And there was a slide I skipped that kind of compared reels to TikTok. Yeah, it's a little bit go, more technical. Go back to that real quick, Nick, and we'll just show that so we can move on from that. Well, yeah, I wasn't oh, yeah, sure good. if you wanted to, to go over it or not, but there it is if you want to mention yeah, it. All, all I just wanted to show was just this is a quick slide, obviously, and take a picture of it if you want. But the, the moral of the story is you'll notice that a lot of the features are almost identical. The, the difference I will say about Reels is this is all their features. TikTok has about 500 more than just what you see here. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty incredible. Very cool. All right. Well, so here um, we're going to sort of shift to a couple other things. I want to take a quick second, pause as always, to mention 
that if you're new to these webinars, or even if you've been to them before, but haven't signed up before, um, through Business Video School, we actually provide free video lessons, all right? So what we did, and we're talking about short form content, right? So a lot of our trainings inside of the school are any for anywhere from half an hour to an hour long, because they're obviously pretty complex topics. Um, so we wanted to experiment with, hey, can we create something that's much shorter? Can we make videos that are anywhere from one to three minutes long that teach just one particular thing, right? So for instance, um, the proper process to use when you go live on Facebook or how to set up your lighting so that you look the best when you're on a Zoom meeting or you know um, how, to, how to control the audio quality, how to do some basic editing on just a phone, like things like that, right? Really, really simple, short concepts. So I want to give you a chance to get those tips for free. Um, again, these are going to be delivered to you by email. So the way this works is you're going to take out your phone. So again, if you haven't done this yet, just go ahead and do it now. I don't want you to forget about it, right? But take your phone out. And we, we actually created a screenshot of exactly what to do here, right? So you want to create a text message where you're sending a text to the phone number 44222, right? It's called a, it's a short code, right? So it's not a full phone number, but you put it into the phone number field in your text message app. 44222. And then you just need to send the text that says learn video without any spaces, right? So L-E-A-R-N-V-I-D-E-O. Once you send that with, again, nothing else in the text message, don't put quotes around it, don't include your name, nothing else. You hit send. It's going to respond with the text you see on the screen. It's going to say, hey, happy, you know, thanks for, for texting us. Uh, please respond with an ad with a text that only contains your email address. And that's going to get you registered to get our free video lessons, right? So if you've never been to a webinar before, thanks for attending for the first time. If you have, but you haven't signed up on our list, please do. Because we have a ton of, I think we have like, what do we have, Jeff? Maybe 35 of these, these micro lessons we've created at this point. At least, yeah, absolutely. Right. And we just created a, a series on uh, Bomb Bomb. And we have a series on TikTok coming out. It's probably going to start sometime in the next couple of weeks. So if either of those topics are interesting um, or anything else, you want to, we have a, we cover all kinds of stuff under the sun. But make sure you go ahead and hop on that list while you have the chance to. Okay. You, you know right, what I was going to Nick, if I can give one testimonial too to this. Um, yeah. One of the reasons why I'm a part of this, guys, is is not because it was my idea. This is this is the brainchild of Nick and and a couple other partners, Vanessa and Michael. Uh, but one of the reasons why I did decide to become a part of it was because I was passionate about sharing this and helping teach this to the real estate world. Um, and one of my biggest goals for business video school is to always stay on the forefront of all things, not just video, but also social media, uh, because that's kind of, that's my, that's my kind of vendetta. That's my goal. And I love social media so much. And I love the power that it brings of not only that is done for my business, I want to help others do the same for theirs. And so uh, it's not just about the learning the video. I just wanted to point that out to people is that like this whole TikTok rage, if you will, like we're going to continue to be out ahead of it. Uh, Tristan also helps us there. Uh, so YouTube shorts, all of that kind of stuff. I, I will promise you, we will be out ahead and we will be teaching this stuff ahead of almost any other platform that exists. Yeah, that's a great point. So for those of you that said, a couple of you said you had a lead digit identifier not recognized, you do need to make sure that you only type out L-E-A-R-N-V-I-D-E-O in the body of the text message. No spaces, the capitalization doesn't matter. Um, but if you got lead digit not recognized, that's because you didn't send those exact letters in that exact order in. And that's why you would have gotten that response. So you know, please make sure you do that. If by the end of the webinar, you haven't been able to sign up, message me um, and I can just take your email address and get you, get you registered directly, all right? Now we're gonna keep moving because we got a few other things to go over here. Um, so here is a few things that, you know, this is what Jeff was mentioning before. So we know short form content. We know this micro content is, is already exploding. It's going to continue to be a huge trend over the next six months. So what does that look like? What are a few things that you can focus on that you can do in your videos, um, that are going to make them more eye catching. So I want to, I want Jeff, I want you to talk about jump cuts. Cause I know this is one that you've been experimenting with a lot. You've seen some success. So, so tell us, you know, what is a jump cut and how do you sort of en envision people using this in their videos? So I, so I love it. And the best way I would describe it is this, is you, you can do one of two things. You can shoot a video by pressing play and just talking, right? Um, and you can actually edit in your own jump cuts. In other words, you can take that two or three minute video, let's just use that as an example, and then cut out pieces throughout the video, which then give you a jump cut, which means just a quick, like it, it shows you that it's not progressive. It just didn't carry all the way through. You, you cut it. And so therefore 
to the to the the common eye they may not they may not notice it but as you start to see it more uh they start to become uh more prevalent you it's it's obviously will will stick out to you and it's become a very popular form of editing in videos uh and i think because youtubers do do longer 10 minute videos it just became something that they had to do they wanted to cut out the fluff and that's the fluff i've been talking about in those 2 to 3 minute videos you can cut out the ums you can cut out the ahs you can cut out the stuff that's just not really that relevant I have learned to, to really enjoy it because of what I explained before, which is instead of writing a script and reading a script for, for a however minute, uh, however long video, I can now shoot my video in segments. So one line at a time, which then creates the jump cut look, which is exactly what I'm, I'm going for. And so I will even take it one step further. And instead of keeping the camera in the exact same position, the entire one minute video, for example, I move it around. So it's like, I have a different back which also creates more of, of kind of an eye appealing thing. It's something that grabs your attention like, oh, geez, it keeps moving around. Uh, and, and for whatever reason, I, I don't know if I, again, I can't, I can't explain the psychology behind it. I just know that I kind of study this stuff. And by studying, I pay attention. I'm always watching. I'm consuming. I'm seeing what the biggest influencers are doing. And, uh, I, and then I just kind of found that it was so easy to create my own jump cut content on TikTok that I've literally fallen in love with that style of content. Um, so it's rare anymore that I even do a two or three minute video because I love condensing my message down. It's like a challenge. Yeah. And my question for you, Jeff, would be like how, so two to three minutes, I mean, are, are you feel like you're getting what would, have, what would have been a three minute video done in less than 60 seconds? I mean, what kind, yeah. of, kind of compression are you getting done there? It's challenging, but when you really break it down, if you ever go back and listen to any of your videos, you'll you'll find that you ramble a lot. We, yeah, you, Nick, but all of us, we just ramble, and and I do that. You know, I find myself on my live videos, even when I give myself a bullet point list. Like I talk, a two or three minute video might take five to eight. It's too long, and so. I think you'd be surprised. So what I've done, just as an example, because I, I kind of get where you're going with this question is, is maybe that's not enough time. Okay, perfect. My election rates video was perfect example of that. It did end too soon. So what did I do at the very end? I said, check out my next video to see what, what you know, like what, um, what, my, uh, what my prediction was for after the election. So I, I used that to now tease a future video. And so there's so many different things you can do by forcing yourself to condense your videos. I will tell you, it's been an exercise uh, that's been challenging, um, but I've learned to enjoy it because I know that the odds of consumption of my entire message are far greater in a 60 second video than if I'm putting out longer form content. Now, again, let me, let me, let me stress this. I'm not talking about YouTube. Like YouTube is designed for long form content. But every other platform, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, your odds of getting full consumption are much greater if the audience, if the viewer knows they see the TikTok watermark or they see a Reels watermark, they know it's going to be short form. And it's just, I, I think it increases my odds. I think it's giving me better performance. Yeah, that's a great point. And I think that, you know, what you're going to see amongst uh, all the, the points that we're making here is that you know, you're ultimately trying, you know, social media is built to release dopamine, right? It's basically like, you know, every so many posts you see is, is going to engage you and, you know, either rile you up or get you excited or whatever, right? I mean, these things kind of work like slot machines. And so you can, you can ignore that, you can be mad about it, or you can literally use it to your advantage, right? So a lot of the things that we're talking about is all about how do you make your content have sort of the same effect, right? So um, one of the things that people will, you will know, see kind of like YouTubers do um, is they'll have some sort of exciting moment every so often through their videos, right? Because I mean, YouTube and sort of that longer form of content, I think is also a trend we're going to continue to see emerge over the next six months. And what they're doing is they're basically, they're acknowledging that, you know what, um, I'm going to lose someone's tension gradually. So I have to kind of continue to grab them back, right? And so one of the easiest ways to do that is jump cuts, right? Because just simply like if, if this background behind me changes all of a sudden in the middle of me talking, you would, you would notice, right? It would catch your attention. So that's what you're ultimately trying to do here is you're just trying to give people, and because of what, the way our attention spans are shifting, 
um, you got to get that in there more often now, right? So, so something where you might have done 30 seconds to the camera and then cut to something else, maybe now it's down to 10 seconds, right? And you're just sort of doing more of these cuts to make what you're, uh, what you're talking about that much more stimulating because it'll keep people focused on your video, right? Now, the, the second point here is the exact same thing, which is using trending songs, hashtags, and effects to add more stimulation to your video, right? So um, brands have been doing this for years now, and obviously now it's really available to all of us. So think about radio commercials or television commercials, right? A lot of times, you know, at least in the past 15, 20 years or so, the music that they use is popular current music, right? And the reason they do that is because they know you're going to recognize it. They know you're going to maybe even sing along to it. And what happens is that your, your affinity, your excitement for that particular piece of music transfers to them because now they're associated with that song. And that used to cost hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? I mean, you know, if, if Pepsi wants to get an Ariana Grande song or something uh, in their commercial, they got to pay her a ton of money, right? Because it's going to be seen by a lot of people. Well, now you can do the same thing for free, which is honestly kind of mind blowing, right? So you can get on TikTok and get on these platforms that have access to all of this trending music. And what's really cool on TikTok in particular is they'll even tell you which songs are currently trending, right? When you go to add the music to your video, it will show you which songs are currently most popular popular. And so, um, you know, artists are even using this fact on TikTok, they're using TikTok to basically launch new music, right? So they'll go out and they'll create a dance and they'll make, you know, do something fun. Um, and so use that to your advantage as well, right? And then the last yeah. one here. Yeah, Nick, uh, I'll even mention one of my daughters is actually yeah. getting paid to do this. So she oh, yeah. is an influencer <laughs> and they, she is, she's been recruited by one of those music companies that says, we're going to give you a dance, go do it. And then we know we're going to get a hundred thousand plus, maybe millions of eyeballs because my daughter has a big organic audience. That's awesome. It's yeah. Crazy. Well, there you go. Right. First hand experience right there. Mm -hmm. um, the last one I'll mention, we'll move on is make content around entertaining themes. This is one that if you're having trouble coming up with um, what should I talk about? And I think this is a, this is a struggle. A lot of real estate agents have is like, you know, what should I talk about? What should my content be about? Right. And then you'll get advice like, Oh, document your life, you know, that kind of stuff. And I'll, I'll say firsthand that always confused me. I'm like, why do people want to see my life? And, and I get it now. Right. And I think Jeff's a great example of doing that really well, but not everybody wants to do that. And so maybe, maybe for you, what you should do is, is hone in on a theme. There's lots of TikTok accounts. There's lots of social media accounts that are not about the individual person. They're about a topic. They're about a theme. They're about a particular community. Right. So whatever that is, and here's how I'd recommend doing it. I know we won't spend much on time on this, but is think about your ideal customer, right? What do they like? What are they excited about? What are some of their interests? What are some of their hobbies? Where do you overlap with them? So it's as simple as when, you, when you're meeting with some of your favorite customers, what are the things you just bullshit about, right? Like what are the things you just chit chat about, you have fun talking about? Make your content about those things, right? But you can go further. You can go all the way down that rabbit hole and you can literally build your channel or build your content around that particular topic, right? Now, I would recommend having other areas where you talk on certain points, but that is completely acceptable. So if you want to create a TikTok or an Instagram, whatever it is around cooking or around pets or whatever it is, right? I know some agents that have tens of thousands of followers on a pet focused account and they're hardly ever in the video. Now you're going to have to show up in some of the videos if you want that affinity and affection to transfer to you and your business, but there are all kinds of opportunities here and there's still a lot of them are untapped, right? So really think about those interests. Think about, you know, what is it that people are, are already drawn to? What are they already pursuing? What are they already watching? And can you make something that contributes to that? And that's going to continue to be a, a, an opportunity for you. Great. Hey, I'm going to also mention Sarah, uh, mm -hmm. Sarah, what is her last name here? Blomstrom. I hope I said that right. Uh, clearly knows what the hell she's doing. She's got some really good comments here in the chat. If you want to check it out, she is hundred percent right when she comes to uh, creating uh, micro influence content. Although I will say, Sarah, micro influence content is not just micro content. Uh, to me, micro influence is becoming an influence in a small area. And you can do that via YouTube. You can do that via uh, Facebook. You can do that just by creating co community content. That to me is what a micro influencer is. Uh, but doing it with micro content, she's right. Like Gen Z, they want to know, like, trust you. I think everybody does. But Gen Z specifically and then the younger generations, maybe millennials as well, they want to consume it in a short, short form. And that is the future. So unless you're planning on retiring in the next couple of years, uh, I would start embracing this stuff. 
Very true. Well, we have a few minutes left. I did want to mention this before we wrap up here. We are holding a tour of Business Video School tomorrow. So basically, let me say this, right? If you've been to these webinars, and maybe this is your first, but whatever it is, if you feel like this is helpful, if you feel like you want to learn more about video, you want to make this a priority in your business, we would love for you to come check us out, right? So this is a chance to basically, number one, we give away a free lapel microphone to somebody every time. So it's a chance to win a lapel mic. Um, but it's also a chance to come in, ask your questions and figure out, should I join business video school? You know, are Nick and Jeff and Tristan and Vanessa and Michael and the whole team, are these the right people to teach me how to use this in my business, right? So if, if that sounds enticing to you, what I want you to do is just click that link. I just shared it in the chat. I think there's a couple comments after it. So I'll go ahead and share it one more time. Um, but go check it out. We'd love for you to drop by and check us out tomorrow and get to know us a little bit to see if we might be the right fit for you, right? You don't have to feel pressured to get signed up for the school right away, um, but it is a great chance to come learn about us. It is not recorded, so you do have to attend live. We do not send out a recording of it, um, but if you want to come check us out, that would be definitely the way to do it, all right? Okay, I think we have, let me scoot over here. Um, we do have one last section for you. So it's, it's funny, anytime I do a little promotional post, a bunch of people leave right away. So I think we just lost like 15 people, but that's all right. We still got some content for you. So we do got to get out of here in just a few minutes because there is another webinar coming up. But last thing I wanted to say, and this is one that's, that's definitely sort of close to my heart here, is that another trend I really believe we're starting to see emerge is longer series-based content. And this is actually something we're probably going to be building a course around inside a business video school very soon. So here's the idea is that, you know, we've had TV for a long time, right? And one thing that YouTube clearly demonstrated to us is that TV does not have to be super professional. It does not have to be high end. It doesn't have to be polished, right? It just needs to be quality content. And this is the thing, right? I'm actually an introvert. Right? People never believe that when I'm doing these webinars. But, you know, if you think about the, the, the logistics of this, like I'm just sitting here talking to a piece of plastic and, and glass and aluminum, right? So, I, you know, it's, it's pretty reasonable to re that a, an, in, an introvert can do video, right? Um, I think it's one of the ultimate sort of secret weapons for introverts, but it is a little bit harder for me to get out there and make a lot of micro content about my day-to-day -day life, right? That's a little bit more uncomfortable. What was not uncomfortable is the idea of building a series around a particular topic, right? So for the past two years, and I, I stopped right before the pandemic, I did a show called the Bourbon Friday Show, where I interviewed different founders of startups in the St. Louis area every single Friday. I built probably the strongest network I've ever built through doing that show, right? I know a lot of the most interesting, uh, most ambitious, most creative people in the entire city from doing those interviews, right? I even met some of the top local politicians. So there's a lot of ways to do this. You do not have to overcomplicate it, right? Pick something you're passionate about, pick something you're interested in and make a show about it, all right? So again, that would be another one. Let me know in the chat if you would ever be interested in us doing a full webinar on the idea of creating a series that you can create on a regular basis, right? So it doesn't have to be weekly, it can be monthly. I felt it was easiest to do weekly. Um, and, I, and the other thing is I had a consistent format. So it was a live show, it followed the same format every single time. And it was something I could do on a regular basis. And here's the other part of creating a series that I'm going to mention really quickly that I do really like is that you can actually take that footage, you can create, take the show you've created and chop it up into shorter content, right? What I was doing is I was interviewing people. So as I'm doing this back and forth and having this interview-based conversation, I could actually then later take that and cut out every single individual question that they answered for me. And that was its own piece of content, right? So think about it. So you're gonna create this, this, uh, this show, this series that's gonna make it easier to make content every single week. And then you can take that and chop it up into a whole bunch of individual pieces of content. You could have 10, 15, 20 videos for the entire week based on one particular video that you made, right? So that is gonna be another uh, emerging trend you're going to continue to see. I think YouTube is a great place for that. But really, I think that can go on YouTube. It can go on Facebook. It can even go on LinkedIn. I think LinkedIn is a great place to be sharing your content. Um, so really keep that in the back of your mind, right? Now, we don't really have time for this, but I'm just going to sum up the last couple slides by saying this. The technology in the phones is continuing to get better. And we're getting to a point where I would argue that most people do not need a professional camera, right? Um, I don't, I think even if you're making nicer stuff, the, the, the degree to which these cameras capture this content, right? The things you can do with it, 
they they really are just mind blowing at this point, right? So the the iPhone 12 uh, and Pro just came out. I mean, they have 12 megapixel cameras in them, right? There's a wide, there's an ultra wide, there's even a telephoto lens in the iPhone uh, 12 Pro, right? So I I have all these lenses that I can attach to my phone. Don't even really need them anymore, right? As soon as I upgrade to the latest model, I'm going to basically be able to get rid of those lenses because they're built into the phone, right? So keep an eye on this stuff, right? I mean, there, there's all kinds of stuff coming out. There's there's LiDAR in these phones. So we're getting into the augmented reality world, right? Like I wouldn't be surprised if in the next few months or, or maybe a year or two, we start to see the opportunity to, for instance, do AR home tours, right? So again, with the whole social distancing and just convenience, imagine if your client could go into a house, hold their phone up, and then you were on their screen giving them a tour of the home using augmented reality, right? Or if they could put on a headset um, and then walk around a house, but also have you standing virtually next to them, not actually there in person, but virtually, right? You could just sit there in your office and do home tours all day long, all over the city and never have to leave. So there's just some really cool things that are starting to emerge in this space. Um, I just want to mention that real quick. I, I wish we had a little bit more time to talk about it because um, we do have a few. Let me, let, me, let me just sum things up and then we'll get off of here. Um, but basically, you know, the takeaways from today are creating short vertical videos, right? Keep an eye on smartphone tech we just talked about, and then using trending songs and effects and jump cuts to stimulate the viewer, right? So whatever you can do to get those, you know, those uh, pleasure juices, so to speak, in their brain running, right? Get that dopamine flowing through their brain. That is what you want to stay focused on here because that is what's going to get you results. All right. So that's all we got for you today. We do got to get off of here because there is another webinar coming up. Um, I'm going to send one more link in the chat. We got one last thing to share with you. I'm sorry. There's a lot of kind of things to mention today, but this one is really cool. We just put together a content calendar for 2021 with 104 ideas. Actually, there's 15 bonus ideas. So technically it's 119 ideas for videos. All right. So I just went ahead and threw that link in the chat as well. If you'd like to go check it out, it is on sale right now for half off for just $27. Um, so if you want to get, basically we'll take care of planning all of your content for 2021. I think you should do more than this, but at least this gives you a really solid base to have a couple ideas every single week of the year. Again, this is specifically for real estate agents. That's what we specialize in. Um, so that link is in the chat right now. I would highly recommend you check it out because um, it should be a great fit for your video production needs. All right. Okay, Jeff, any last uh, thoughts before we get kicked out of here? No, but thank you all for the uh, feedback. We are going to create webinars for all of the stuff that we talked about. We got the last three of them there. We're looking forward to seeing you guys all back on future webinars. Yeah, cool. Yeah, the feedback is very much, uh, very much appreciated. So, all right, folks. Well, thanks so much for being with us here today. We appreciate it. Hopefully you got some ideas for trends to keep an eye on over the next few months. And uh, we will see you. I think we're going to be back next week with an interview with uh, Ken Pozak, actually. So that should be YouTube. really, really good. YouTube. Don't yeah, miss you want to know more about YouTube. Ken kills it on YouTube. So we'll see you there. All right. Bye-bye. Cool. Talk to you later.